Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we want to talk about fat, the importance of fat, and various different ways to increase your fat intake on a keto, carnivore, or keto diet. Before we get into it, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's get right into it. When you're on a keto or carnivore diet, you want to make sure you're getting fat from the right sources. Fat is important to build and maintain vital membranes for all the cells in the body. When you consume the right types of dietary fat in the right amounts, this provides your body with adequate energy because the body prefers to use these types of fats as fuel. So things like seed oils and polyunsaturated fats are things we want to avoid. So anything like soybean oil, corn oil, sunflower, Safflower, cottonseed, rapeseed, peanut oil, those are the types of things we want to avoid because they are inflammatory for our bodies. So whenever you're at the grocery store looking for foods, even keto foods, make sure to check the ingredient label for these types of fats. Okay, tip number one for increasing fat is to add grass-fed butter to your meals. So adding grass-fed butter to your meal is probably the most simple way of adding healthy fat to your meal. Um, one tablespoon of butter is about 12 grams of fat. We always recommend to add enough butter to coat the bottom of the pan when you're cooking. And then if you want, you can add a little bit more butter on top of the meat or the food afterwards if you feel like you still need a little bit more. Grass-fed butter is very tasty. If you have access to Kerrygold, which is the Irish brand and all of their butter is made from Irish grass-fed cows, that's amazing. We did have access to Kerrygold for a while up here in Canada, but it kind of comes and goes. So in Canada, we have a brand called Rolling Meadows, uh, which I believe is a US-based brand, but they have a whole line of grass-fed dairy products. Um, so that one's also really high quality. So speaking of adding butter to your meals, you can also add butter to your coffee in the morning and make that bulletproof coffee um, with or without MCT oil or coconut oil, uh, that's up to you. But I know some people just add the butter to their coffee and they blend it up or they mix it together and it makes kind of that creamy, frothy um, latte in the morning. Consuming grass-fed butter is one of the ways to get the vitamins and nutrients of grass-fed meat without having to spend the prices of grass-fed meat, which can get pretty pricey. So we do know that grass-fed meat is optimal, but in Canada, it is outrageously expensive and it's not really accessible to the average person, I would say. Um, at least it's not available at like most uh, chain type grocery stores. You have to go to like local, uh, local type butchers which are very, very expensive, even though we do like to support local businesses. For those of you guys who are Canadian watching this, I think you can probably relate to that uh, sentiment. So instead of grass-fed meat, we go for grass-fed butter instead. And I think it still gives us some of those benefits that we're trying to go for. Grass-fed butter is a great source of vitamin A and the antioxidant beta carotene. It also has a higher proportion of healthy unsaturated fats and CLA, than regular butter, which is why it's more yellow than regular butter. When cows eat a natural grass-fed diet, it naturally results in a more yellow-colored butter, while cows that eat grain-fed will produce a more pale or lighter colored butter. Um, this is similar to free-range chickens or grass-fed chickens um, that produce eggs with that bright yellow yolk compared to grain-fed chickens, which produce those eggs that have a very pale yellow yolk. Um, you guys have probably seen the difference before if you've tried the different types of eggs out there. Sometimes they're just very like yellow, like a pale yellow, and sometimes they're like bright orange. And that has very much to do with the chicken diet, similar to a cow's diet. General rule of thumb, but the more yellow the butter, the healthier and happier the cow was. Now, of course, butter does burn uh, when you are cooking with butter in the kitchen. So depending on what you're making, if you cook with too much butter, it can lead to a smoky kitchen and your fire alarms may go off and your neighbors may be wondering what you are doing in your house. <laughs> so yes, while butter is great and butter is tasty, uh, we typically use it more to like finish our meats or finish our foods, or we'll make sure to cook meat uh, kind of on a lower temperature uh, if we do use a lot of butter. So that brings us to our next point. So if you're cooking at high temperature, you wanna lean on something with a higher smoke point option. One of our favorite options is beef tallow. You can always find this on Amazon. Carnivore Crisp also sells a good option called beef butter. If you're interested in the Carnivore Crisp beef butter, which is also tallow, use our discount code AllisonKev for 10% off your order at checkout. We also regularly pick up tallow from our local butcher. It's usually frozen or on their shelving area. You can also make your own tallow if you have access to suet. Other high smoke point oils which you can cook at high temperature are avocado oil which we recommend over seed oils. Chosen Foods and Primal Kitchen both have uh, avocado oil and those two are probably the best brands. We have heard or read about avocado oil potentially going rancid. 
um, in other brands. So I would just stick to kind of the tried and true, either Chosen Foods or Primal Kitchen uh, if you're looking for avocado oil. And I like avocado oil because it's neutral. It doesn't have any flavor. There is also olive oil, but olive oil does have a bit of like a heavier flavor, um, which can like, you know, alter the taste of food a little bit. I'm not really a fan personally, but uh, I know some people do consume olive oil. And you can't really cook with it at high temperature anyways. So it's more of a finishing oil or something you would add afterwards. Yeah. We always just prefer tallow and animal fats if possible. I've always thought of it more for like eating bread or like dipping it in bread if you're eating like pasta or some sort of Italian dish, that's when olive oil would taste better. Uh, but for what we like in terms of our taste buds, um, yeah, either something neutral, butter or tallow are the best options. Other animal fat options that are good for high smoke point cooking are things like lard and bacon grease. You could even use chicken fat if you wanted as well. So any of these animal fat options are better than using things like seed oils. But if you love the taste of butter, but you don't want to risk burning it if you're cooking it at high temperature, you can also use ghee. Ghee is quite available now at most grocery stores and there are a lot of grass-fed options available for that as well. Ghee is basically clarified butter, so it has the milk solids removed. You can also make this at home if you wanted to, but it is a little bit more tricky. I would say that ghee has a slightly more mild, less intense flavor than uh, traditional butter. And like Kevin mentioned earlier, there's also bacon grease or bacon fat. So make sure you do save the bacon grease when you are cooking bacon and just pour it into a little jar. That's what we do. And that's a great way to use bacon fat um, on the carnivore diet. So another great way to add fat to your dishes if you're on a keto or carnivore diet is to add egg yolks. Each egg yolk is about five grams of fat, so it's an easy way to add fat to your dish. I know a lot of people like to add raw egg yolks on top of their mince or on top of their burger or meat. So it's a great way to add some additional fat and get some of that creamy sort of flavor. It's not for everyone, but if it's for you, then it's a good way to get that additional fat. One way that we like to do it is actually to make a hollandaise or bernays style sauce. Another way that we like to add egg yolks to our foods is to drop them into soup to make like an egg drop soup. If you really want to just increase the amount of fat that you're getting in, you can separate the egg yolks from the egg whites and just include the yolk in your food. Egg yolks include a variety of nutrients, including B12, B2, A, and folate. Egg yolks are also one of the few foods that include naturally occurring vitamin D, which is important for healthy and strong bones and teeth. I know there's a lot of standard dieting advice or bodybuilding advice out there where they throw away the yolks and separate them, but we would never do that. Make sure to always have the yolk with your egg or just have the yolk by itself. I think back in the day, we probably wasted a lot of egg yolks in our lifetime because we were always scared of the fat and the cholesterol, but I think that's all kind of been debunked since we're going more of a ketogenic approach and all the research that has been done. Now we know that we definitely don't have to be afraid of the cholesterol in eggs. Most of the nutrients in an egg are in the yolk and the white itself is just pure protein. If you're enjoying this video today, we are very excited to announce that we are hosting a new masterclass called the four step formula to accelerate your weight loss results on the carnivore diet, where we go over the four step approach that you need to take to customize your carnivore macros to make this way of eating work for you and your weight loss goals. We also go over the top mistakes that people make that are keeping them stuck with weight loss and fat loss on the carnivore diet. So if you are interested, the masterclass will be on Tuesday, October 2nd at 5.30 p.m. Pacific. We will leave all of the registration details in the description below as well as on the screen here. Everyone's body responds so differently to carnivore and that is why you see so much conflicting and confusing information out there on what carnivore is, what we should be doing, all these carnivore trends that are coming out. And based on all of our experience in coaching our clients for weight loss on the carnivore diet, we've really been able to hone in on what is working and what is not working. And so that is why we are so excited to package all this information together for you guys in this masterclass. So please do attend if you are interested in learning more. And there will also be a live Q&A session at the end of the masterclass where we can hang out and you guys can chat with us and ask us any questions that you might have. So a lot of people think that adding fat to a keto diet is to add a whole bunch of butter or add a bunch of lard or bacon grease. But our favorite way is to actually pick the fattiest cuts of meat and include them into your diet regularly. For example, if you're choosing pork, you can lean on things like pork ribs or pork belly, which is about a 70 to 80% fat to protein ratio. If you're going on chicken, you want to eat chicken wings, which is even higher fat. If you're eating things like beef, which is our favorite, you could choose fattier cuts like brisket, beef back ribs, which we love to cook, as well as fattier cuts like chuck roast and fattier blends of ground beef like 70 30 or 80 20. we love including things like brisket and chuck roast because they are family friendly dishes that you can make large portions of and they're quite economical as well 
and they satisfy both your protein, but even more importantly, your fat needs. And it also feeds your whole family. So that's also very important as well, especially if you have kids to feed or your spouse isn't doing carnivore. Things like brisket and chuck roast, you can just cook in big batches, slow cooker it or instant pot it, and um, you can make whatever sides that your family eats if they're not eating carnivore. Um, and then that's just a great way to make sure that everyone is satisfied without having to create separate menus for other people. If you are the only person in your life that's doing carnivore, maybe your kids or your spouse is not doing carnivore with you, that's totally understandable and normal. We do have a video on our best tips of how to approach carnivore if no one else in your life is doing it with you. So we will leave a link to that up in the description. And then there's steak. So the fatty steak that you can get is a ribeye. That's about a 70% fat to protein ratio or about one gram of protein to one gram of fat. You can also get things like strip loins, New York strips, T-bones, or chuck eye steaks, which are a little bit more economical. I touched on this a bit earlier, but ground meat is definitely an easy way to increase your fat intake. So things like pork sausages or even ground lamb is usually fattier than options you'll get from the beef or ruminant animals. So if you are looking for a bunch of recipes that have a lot of these fatty cuts that you can incorporate in your diet, We'll leave a link for a bunch of videos and recipes down below, or you can visit our blog at www.justrealfood.com where we have this all organized by diet type and protein type. Another really tasty high fat option is things like chicken skin. There are a few recipes out there where you take the chicken skin and you cook it in the oven and it gets nice and crispy. It's kind of like a chip. So that's a great option and it's super tasty as well because the skin is always the best part of the chicken anyways. I know some other people like to throw beef fat trimmings into their air fryer or their oven and that gets really crispy and as well. So another way you can increase fat in your diet is by including whole fat dairy if you can tolerate it. Now these are things like cheese, milk, yogurt, sour cream, heavy cream, any sort of full fat versions of dairy are totally acceptable. I would stay away if you can from lower fat dairy options because you definitely want the fat in there to balance out the carbs that you're intaking from lactose. Dairy is a great option to include if you are on a carnivore diet because it is a carnivore friendly food. But like we said earlier, make sure to use the highest fat option you can find. So dairy is a great option to include as a condiment or to melt it over your food for some additional flavor. Okay, the last tip is to add additional condiments. So if you are pure carnivore or you're only interested in being pure carnivore, then this tip might not apply to you. If you're in the process of transitioning to carnivore, maybe you are standard American or you're keto and you're just trying to lower the carbs over time, go from like standard American all the way to like the lion diet. And in our experience and, and also our experience with working with a lot of people, it's very much a process of eliminating foods over time, learning how to simplify your taste buds and letting go of some some of those things that we grew up eating and some of those flavors that we grew up eating and just learning how to wean off of flavor in general as you go more and more carnivore and more and more lion diet. From what we've seen just like through working with our own clients and talking to so many people in the community is it is a bit of a process of eliminating those foods and it does take some time and not everyone gets to the lion diet point and that's okay. So if you are in the gray area in between <laughs> keto and carnivore or standard American and carnivore, whatever you want to call it, um, and you still allow for some plant-based foods, you can look to include avocado mayo, avocado oil. I think the cold turkey approach of completely eliminating everything and just eating meat, salt, and water works for some people, but I also think that it doesn't work for everyone. And what we've actually seen is that people who try to go cold turkey too hard have a harder time sticking with the diet, or they really see it as like a yo-yo diet or a fad diet or just something in the short term. I would say that being able to sustain this diet longer term is much more important to us and so I think a lot of that is just learning how to make the lifestyle changes and habits of slowly eliminating foods over time so that it's in a way that you can sustain it for more than like 30 or 60 days. It's kind of like thinking about meat, salt and water as the optimal dietary standard just like how walking 10,000 steps a day is a optimal um, exercise standard but not everyone can walk 10,000 steps a day and if you can't that's totally okay and if you can't do lion diet that's totally okay as well. You don't have to feel like you failed carnivore or carnivore has failed you just because you can't eat a bowl of ground beef with salt. So things like dressings and condiments do have added fat to them and they can be a great thing to add to enhance the flavor of just meat. When you're looking for these condiments, we recommend that they're avocado oil or olive oil based. So Primal Kitchen and Chosen Foods are good brands for that. So these are great ways to get those more traditional flavors that you're used to while also having a healthier option to include in your diet. You could also include things like nuts in your diet if you're looking to increase your fat. 
but do be wary because a little bit of nuts can definitely add up very quickly. Nuts can be a little bit deceiving because you usually buy them in big, bag, <laughs> big bags or big packages, but they're quite high in fat, so you actually don't need too much of them if you're just trying to increase that fat to the protein ratio by a little bit. If you definitely don't, don't want to be eating you know, cups and cups of nuts um, as if they were like chips or something like that. And you it can wanna... be a slippery slope for sure. Yeah, and you want to make sure that they're not negatively affecting your digestion. Obviously, if you're looking for any sort of nut, just make sure there's no sugar and it's not like coated in like, you know, honey caramel syrup or something, which a lot of them actually are still. So you do have to look for plain roasted nuts. Yeah, and a lot of them are roasted in seed oils as well. So yeah. that's another thing to look out for. Yeah. So it's all to your taste and tolerance. If you liked our video today, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It really allows us to spread the message and help as many people as possible with this way of eating. And if you were interested in joining us at our masterclass on the four-step formula to accelerate your carnivore weight loss results, again, it's on Tuesday, October 3rd at 5.30 p.m. Pacific. I will leave the registration details in the description box below. So do check that out and join us if you have the time. Leave us a comment down below and let us know how you like to increase your fat on a carnivore diet. Until next time.